Men say you can even sing down the moon from heaven. Hmm? As to that, I know not. I know you are dangerous. You threaten my daughter. You have to go. I wish her well, my lord. I wish her all happiness. I hope that Jason may be as kind to her as to me. That is your no, wish. No, I misspoke. I thought of old days. I acknowledge, my dear, you have some cause for grief. I all the more must guard against your dark wisdom and bitter heart. You must judge me cruelly. It is true I have some knowledge of drugs and medicines. If any person knows a little more than the common man, the people suspect him. But you are not a common man, Lord of Corinth. You will not fear knowledge. No. Nor change my decision. I pity you, my dear, but you must go. You pity me? You pity me? I will endure a dog's pity or a watling toad's. May God who hears me, we shall see the end who's be pitied. This is good. This is what I desire. Unmask the livid face of your hatred, and I see who I deal with. Serpent and wolf. A wolf from Asia. I'd rather have you rage now than do harm later. Now, my dear, out of here, before my men drive you out. A woman driven half mad with sorrow, laboring to save her little children. No wolf, my lord. The races of Asia are human, too as the bright Greeks are. And we have children and love them as Greeks do. You have a daughter, sir. She's beautiful. If I were near her, I would soon love her. <laughs> you can speak sweetly enough. You can make honey in your mouth like a brown bee. When it serves your turn. Not honey. The truth. Trust you or not, you are going out of this country, my dear. Make ready quickly. I have a guest in my house. I should return to him. What guest? Oh, my lady, ask him who is the guest. If powerful and friendly, he might be a refuge to us in bitter exile. I know that your will is granted. But even on the harsh face of a granite mountain, some flowers of mercy may grow in season. Have mercy on my little sons, Creon, though there is none for me. How oh, long, woman? This is decided, done, finished. I am not a beggar. I will not trouble you. I shall not live long. Sire, grant me a few hours yet. One day to prepare in one little day before I go out of Corinth forever. What? No! I told you the day is today, my dear, this day, and the hour is now. There are no flowers on this mountain, not one violet, not one anemone. Your face, my lord, is like flint. If, if I could find the right words, if some god would lend me a touch of eloquence, I'd show you my heart. I'd lift it out of my breast and turn it over in my hands. You'd see how pure it is of any harm or malice toward you or your household. I beseech you, Creon, by the soft yellow hair and the smooth, cool forehead and the white knees of that young girl who is now Jason's bride, lend me this inch of time. One day, half a day, for this one is now half gone and... I will go my sad course and vanish in the morning quietly as dew that drops on the stones at dawn and as dry at sunrise. You will never again be troubled by any word or act of mine. And this I pray you for your dear child's sake. Oh, Creon. 
Oh, what is half a day in all the rich years of Corinth? I'm no tyrant. I have been merciful to my own hurt many times. Oh, even to myself, I seem foolish if I grant you this thing. No, my dear, I will not grant it. Well, we shall watch you as a hawk does a viper. What harm could she do in the tale of one day? A ruler ought to be ruthless, but I am not. I am a fool in my own eyes, whatever the world may think. Take it then. Make your preparations. But if tomorrow's sun shines on you here, my dear, you die. Oh, Enough God. words, thank me not. I want my hands washed of this business. I will thank you. And the whole world will hear of it. I have seen this man's arrogance. I watched and heard him. I am of Corinth, and I say that Corinth is not well ruled. The city where even a woman even a foreigner suffers unjustly the rods of power, is not well ruled. Unhappy, my dear, what haven, what sanctuary, where will you wander? This man, this barking dog, this gold fool, gods of my father's country. You saw me low on my knees before that great dog of Corinth humble, holding my heart in my hands for a dog to bite. Great this! Dogs, teeth! Women, it is a bitter thing to be a woman. A woman is weak for warfare, she must use cunning. Men boast their battles, I tell you this, and we know it. It is easier to stand in battle three times in the front line in the stabbing fury than to bear one child. And a woman, they say, can do no good, but in childbirth it may be so. She can do evil. She can do evil. I wept before that tall dog. I wept my tears before him. I degraded my knees to him. I gulled and flattered him. Oh, triple fool. He's given me all that I needed, a little time, a space of time. Death is dearer to me than what I am now. And if today, by sunset, the world has not turned, and turned sharp too, then let your dog, Creon, send two or three slaves to kill me in a cord to strangle me. I will stretch out my throat to it. But I have a bit of hope, women. I begin to see light through the dark wood between the monstrous trunks of the trees at the end of the tangled forest and I hold a pinpoint of light. I shall not die, perhaps, as a pigeon dies, nor like the innocent lamb that feels the hand on its head and looks up from the knife to the man's face and dies. No, like some yellow-eyed beast that has killed its hunters, let me lie down on the hounds' bodies and the broken spears. And how to strike them? What means to use? There are so many doors through which painful death may glide in and catch. Which one? Which one? 